hi hello everyone and welcome to or welcome back to the channel and we are now in year three of worm clan and all i can say is a lot happened this year so let's get on to the star clan residents we have three new members this year Technically, Rookpur is the second to die this year, but I put him first for a reason. So, Rookpur died this last moon, sadly due to being murdered, which is one of the bigger reveals for this year so far. But Rookpur had actually became deputy due to Ice Feather stepping down due to her age, and Rookpur seemed to be doing really well in their deputy position, and I was really hoping for a future rook star but sadly someone else got to them and there seems to be an overall story so far and rook fur ended up being targeted not because they necessarily did anything wrong but sadly they were wrong place wrong time so with what their prompt said which of course i'll have to blur out the name of the cat since i won't be revealing the murderer until i get to their um art page but from what the prompt said it was a yao took rook per by surprise as they were patrolling the territory blank cat suddenly crashed into their view mewing about how rook per had to come and see rook per followed the distressed warrior to a small ravine they peered over the edge and noted the sharp rocks at the bottom suddenly they felt a sharp shove from behind letting out a yowl of surprise that was cut short as they landed on the rocks. So, yeah, pretty, pretty gruesome for the first death. Well, first murder in Worm Clan. So, besides that gruesome um, murder description, they did also agree about the whole Ice Feather is a terrible deputy, which obviously they ended up taking over the role. They did at some point try to convince Raven Swipe to run away with them, which surprised me a lot since they didn't really interact much, at least from what I took note of. So at some point Rook Purr wanted to leave with Raven Swipe, which I'm kind of sad now since they'll no longer be able to do that. And the last two noted that they found a Juniper, which I just realized while recording this, I forgot to draw. So. You'll see it in their sprite, but Rupert is supposed to have a juniper berry in their ear. But again, I was not paying attention. I was just trying to get these drawings out. And obviously their last note was that they were appointed new deputy. So if you cannot tell with how far we are in this video, this is going to be pretty long. So hopefully you can stick through it. But that's all I have for Rupert. I do feel bad for them. But that is the past deputy, Rook Purr. So now we're on to the actual first clan death, which is Larchwater and her half-brother, Quiver Kit. Larchwater sadly died patchouli speckle-wise and was killed in, by a wolverine when exploring a new tunnel system, which I knew something was going to happen since again the same thing happened to Patrulli Speckle but my curiosity got the better of me and Watch Water ended up dying due to it. While her brother Quiver Kit is actually the second murder victim in the clan and of course again I will not be stating which cat did so. I'll wait until I get to their section but Quiver Kit was only three moons old and actually died on moon 36 which is the last moon of the year and I felt so bad because they are the son of Golden Star and Falcon Nudge which was a pairing I was not expecting but they got together and had a quiver but sadly due to a, another cat in the clan they were seemingly killed for no reason or at least that's what it seemed like to me when I first read his prompts. Speaking of which, his prompt stated that Quiver Kit excitedly followed Blank Cat a short distance from the camp to begin the promised battle training. Said Cat said something about how real warriors don't 
pulled back, even in a spar. Quiver Kit nod eagerly. They rarely have any time to duck as Blank Cat Paw whist whistles past their head. The kit stumbles backwards, tripping over their paws and their head landing squarely on a rock, which, again, another rock death. I was originally going to draw it out, but as I thought about it, I decided I'm just going to state it out and leave the speed paint up because honestly, I was just way too sad to actually draw out Quiver Kid's death, but I felt so bad. And again, when I reveal the cat originally, I thought it was for no reason, but again, from the overall story, which I'll get to in the next cat's um, artwork, it does tie it together, but not in the way I thought. So that's Larchwater and her half-brother, Quiver Kit. Now we're on to the cat that is basically behind everyone's misfortune this year, which is Lake Brush, who ended up dying from that bite wound by Golden Star. And originally I was going to allow her to stay in Star Clan, but with how I have thought of their story, yeah, she deserves to be in the Dark Forest. And from what I had written out, basically, if you remember a few years back, she was bitten due to being punished by Golden Star. And that was because she was thinking of a way to basically overthrow the clan. Which I realized in the past two years I didn't mention it. But Lakebrush is from another clan, so she knows how the rules work, and she knows that going against the leader's orders is strictly prohibited. And so when her daughter Volbright started to have wishes and ambitions of being deputy, Lakebrush was going to do anything to get her daughter to be in a position of power, especially since Lakebrush herself could not be any more powerful than a warrior since she's an elder. So Lakebrush and her daughter Volbright started having basically little mini meetings somewhere off the territory where they would talk about plans of getting Ice Feather to step down, which included Volbright going towards other clanmates and basically just talking bad about Ice Feather and just highlighting just how quote unquote unqualified she was. And that did eat away at Ice Feather herself, which is why she eventually did step down from deputyship. And since Volbright did have a dep not a deputy, did have an apprentice earlier on in her life, she knew that she was eligible of becoming a new deputy. But once that happened and Ice Feather ended up stepping down, obviously Volbright was not picked. And before that happened, Ice, not Ice Feather, um, Lake Brush ended up dying. But of course, while she was in the Dark Forest, she still had a lot of influence over the cats, specifically the two cats that ended up murdering these new star clan residents so she's basically just been in the back i even um took a screen grab of one of her prompts while in the dark forest which was let me pull it up she found a living cat that they hope will help their plans come to fruition which was before her daughter volbright ended up becoming deputy so she obviously found the cat and the cats are the ones that, well, specifically the cat that murdered Rookper. So, of course, she was able to find a cat that helped her get Rookper off, which Golden Star ended up choosing her daughter, even though she was not in the state to do so. I also wanted to mention that the two specific cats that got Lakebrush sent to the Dark Forest was Hazel Mallow. If you remember last year, he was the one that had the prompts that he knew Lake Brush's secret, along with, of course, Pete Star, who is the Star Clan guide. While being in the Dark Forest, I took notes on 
lake brush whispering in Falcon Nudge's ear. She continued to watch over Falcon Nudge and even started looking at the other medicine cat, Vervain, with some malice in her eye. And the last prompt I wrote about her was that she started looking at Raven Swipe with malice in her eye. So it's clear that she is targeting a lot of the cats that are either close to Falcon Nudge or Golden Star. So clearly she is not happy <laughs> with Golden Star punishing her and leading her to the Dark Forest in her mind. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on her in the next year. But Lake Brush is basically going to be the downfall of this clan. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Sorry about that lax section being so long. I guess I just had a lot more to say about Lake Brush than I realized. But of course, we are on to the living residence of Worm Clan. Now, after that super long section, we are now on to the specifically targeted cats I was talking about, Golden Star and Falcon Nudge. So, obviously Golden Star is not doing okay after losing both her previous deputy and her firstborn son. So, she's she's deteriorating really slowly and she lost a life recently due to that broken bone from fighting that dog so she's she's not doing all right and as i mentioned before she recently became mates with falcon nudge which i didn't expect and that same exact moon she was expecting a litter she ended up giving birth of course and was even wondering if the life of a kitty pet was really that bad so clearly she was thinking about running away from her clan and her responsibilities which i don't blame her with everything going on around her i i don't blame her of course she started to grieve rook purr and she heavily grieved her kitten quiver kit which i'll put up a prompt in, on screen in a second and that's all i had for golden star while her mate, Falcon Nudge, which we'll see in a bit, he also isn't doing great. Now, in-game, he didn't actually grieve that much over the death of both his kittens and um, Deputy. So, I just prompt put that up as him just putting on a facade and a face, and he's, he's just here, but not mentally mentally he's elsewhere he stayed behind for large waters visual vigil and he's just here though i did want to take note on one of the prompts that i put down in his history which was the same moon that i noticed lake brush was whispering in falcon nudge's ear was the same moon he decided to give Ice Feather some advice, which I believe had everything to do with her stepping down because two moons later, if I'm correct, Ice Feather ended up becoming an elder. So it seems like any way and every way Lake Brush tried, she did find a way to get Ice Feather to step down. And I do believe Falcon Nudge is responsible for that. Besides that, that's all I have for the couple. I do feel bad for them. And I really, really, really hope nothing horrible past, you know, their kit being killed and murdered by a clanmate that they don't know did it. But I hope nothing further goes past that. But I won't be surprised, especially with Golden Star's age. She's most likely going to start losing some more lives, so I'm kind of just preparing myself for that. But I hope Falcon Nudge is able to live a longer life, though, since he is the most skilled medicine cat I have so far. So, that is Golden Star and Falcon Nudge. Now we are on to the current deputy, and basically the reason why all this is happening and she is feeling the pressure of it all since it seemed just a little too convenient that after the two 
murders in their clan that all of a sudden the thing she's been wanting since moon 17 which i wrote down that now it's been granted now she's the new deputy and i didn't write much for her of course she grieved the death of her mother she was being a little bit suspicious a few moons after her mother's death which i wrote she was sniffing at the edge of the camp wall suspiciously she also did stop dappled crash who you'll see later on of course from crossing the borders of hope clan and obviously her last prompt was that she was appointed the new deputy so volbright she's she's just feeling the pressure of it all her and her sister are not close as of late and i'll explain why once i get to her sister's artwork but that's all i have for volbright we weirdly enough even though i did all this extra with her mother but volbright she knows i will say that as well she does know that her mother is the reason behind the past two murders she knows lake brush has something to do with it even though she died at the beginning of the year so she knows something's up but for now she's trying to show off a confident facade facade but obviously she she doesn't even know what's going on anymore so that's fulbright then with vervain it seems like she calmed down after being jealous of the other cats for a while and it seemed like this happened after she was able to interpret an omen which i couldn't think of an actual omen like warrior cats omen so you can just make it up in the comments if you want but she was able to figure out that something was going on with lake brush so she continued to pester falcon nudge it seems like she knew falcon nudge was being targeted even before lake brush ended up joining the dark forest but she kept pestering falcon nudge to take on an apprentice and near the end she started pondering her own mortality so i think i'm pretty sure she believes that she is also being targeted by lake brush and she knows something bad is going to happen we'll just have to wait and see in the next year but i'm feeling out for any kinks in the story and vervain just hasn't really done much anyways so i might add more next year we'll just have to wait and see so now we are on to the past deputy herself ice feather her mate blossom mark and a new addition to the relationship icy more so for any notes i have for ice feather they mostly had to do with another injury she had which she got through pretty quickly she was questioning about how the others felt about them as a deputy which was again the same moon falcon nudge gave them advice on whether they should continue to be deputy she was then seen touching noses with a rogue and it seems like a lot of these cats have things for rogues we'll see if we have a new addition or not i feel like we will be she ended up getting a leg infection but luckily she was able to heal through it and around that time she decided to just retire she just did not want to be a deputy anymore she wanted to just relax and be able to spend the later half of her life in the elder's den then with blossom mark it seems like this was the reason why last year they were having a bit of a wedge in their relationship and it seems like that was because blossom mark brought up the idea of adding a new cat into their relationship being icy more which at first it seems like ice feather was not okay with the idea but after some time she did agree and now we have our first poly relationship in the clan. Past that, 
Blossom Mark did have wants of becoming deputy, which obviously did not happen. And she caught White Cough, but quickly healed a moon later. While the new cat in the relationship, Icy Moore, what I took note of was that she also wanted to become deputy because it seems like a lot of the cats here want to become deputy along with the fact that she missed the late leader peat star which i'll have to calculate that later because i wasn't even sure if icy more was around at the time so i have to go back and look at that but that's all i have for the little polycule between icy Ice Feather, not Icy, Ice Feather, Blossom Mark, and Icy More. So then that leads us to Raven's Wipe, who you would think would be completely destroyed after losing another kitten of hers, along with being her previous apprentice, Larchwater. Sorry, my dog's whining at me. But she didn't actually grieve as harsh as I thought. Of course, she did stick around and told some fun stories of large water at her vigil and did catch white cough but healed pretty quickly afterwards so raven swipe she's all right and it doesn't help that she no longer has a shoulder to cry on being falcon nudge since he decided he ended up in a relationship with golden star so now she's just dealing with it but she's just not as distraught as she was in the past year so that's all i have for raven swipe so now we have a new face in the clan and this is the 53 moon old ex kitty pet nikito and I was very shocked, I'll just say that now when I read the name and realized why it sounded so familiar, I'll put up the character on screen. But I guess this cat is named after a cat, and not a cat, a person from Danganronpa, which was very surprising to me. That's why I gave her a little curl fringe as her bangs. But Nagito joined around the middle of the year and only about two moons after they were already showing wants of being a deputy which again i'm really confused about all these cats wanting to be deputy but they ended up getting injured by rat attacks and their paw did end up getting scarred but because it's on the other side you won't see it in the drawing and for the last prompt they showed they were wondering if vervain had gotten any new prophecies so maybe they'll be more lucky than ripper since the last time ripper thought about a prophecy they were sent to star clan but besides that i actually figured out that nagito most likely joined due to icy more since if you remember in year two I see more ended up getting taken and disappeared for a few I think it was a few days and I realized just because of the fact that they have the same color but of course it's a different color that I see more probably talked up her clan a lot while being in the two lake nest and it seems like Nagito got a really got really ahead of themselves when it came to wanting to join so from their prompt which i don't think i took a screenshot of they joined through a patrol and the first thing they did was just scramble up to the clan cats stating that oh they've been she's been training she's been doing everything she needed so they decided that yeah we can let her join and i looked at their relationship lately and i'm pretty sure there's some romance between them so Maybe there'll be a new member with the three cats. We'll see. But that's all I have for Nagito this year. With Gopher Laurel, obviously, she's going through it this year. She just lost her mother. She ended up losing a cat she respected a lot, being Ripper. 
and now it seems like her sister's been scheming behind her back. She's just been really distant, so she's not having a great relationship with Volbright, along with the fact that she is seemingly touching noses with kitty pets lately, and I'm wondering if it's the same kitty pet. So I won't be surprised if one day a kitty pet joins through the border, because if that's the case, it's probably go for Laurel's little fling. And besides that, go for Laurel, she's, she's just resting right now. She's grieving. She's in the medic den due to it. So besides that, that's all I have for go for Laurel. Though I did also want to mention that there was one prompt that really made me sad for her, which was her begging Star Clan to bring her mother back. But sadly, Gopher Lola does not know her mother is not in Star Clan. Now for the remaining Raven Nudge kittens. So of course we have Ink Flash and Slight Lake. And this last year Ink Flash ended up getting injured by a rogue and catching White Cough, which luckily she was able to heal from the then green cough, but she's still hurt from the claw wound, but she's also hurting because of something else. So I'm just going to reveal it now. Ink Flash is the cat that murdered Rook Purr, and I was shocked, especially since Ink Flash was just by herself most of the time and I didn't see the two interact, but I realized it isn't really personal to Ink Flash, but of course it is very personal to Lake Brush. So if you remember in around, pretty sure it was year two, she was having dreams filled with shadowy images, which I'm realizing I probably didn't mention, which is my fault, but she's been having dreams filled with shadowy Im images so I decided that this is how Lake Brush was able to manipulate Ink Flash by basically manipulating her dreams to show Rook Purr being not a great cat in her dreams. So that ended up pushing her so far that she ended up murdering Rook Purr as a sense of protecting the clan in her idealistic way. And I also noticed that she was still feeling very ill, so obviously she's ill because she's in the medic with other cats, but I also feel like it's something more mental that now she's realizing what she's done after doing so, and now she's just having a lot of grief, but also just fear. So at least she's not by herself, because of course she has her remaining brother, Slight Lake, who I have barely any notes on. At most I had is that he of course misses his sister Larchwater and he was also thinking about Star Clan so of course he's missing her really bad and wants to see her once more but cannot and is trying to be there for Ink Flash his remaining sister but obviously he's very confused on what she's going through so he's kind of like his dad where he's not great with emotions but at least he'll try and stay He'll try and be there physically, but emotionally he's elsewhere. So that's all I have for Ink Flash and Slight Lake. Now for my favorite cat, Sprite Wise, we have Dappled Crash, who really got into his colder spirit. He was shown to being just very mean and nasty, which surprised me a lot, especially with his mentor gold star but he ended up being pretty rude he ended up getting a gift from ink flash near the middle of the year he of course passed his ass assessment by golden star but he's also just been insulting basically everyone that gets too close to him i'm not sure where that's coming from maybe he has pretty bad abandonment abandonment issues since he was abandoned at five moons old. So that's probably what that is. I'm not sure. And I hope he gets better at it. Or not better. I hope he gets closer with his clanmates. But with his drawing, originally I was just going to have him being a little nasty. 
but as I mentioned in Volbright section, he ended up attempting to cross Hope Clan's borders for a rabbit, and I went back, I decided, eh, I'll just draw it for his character art, even though it's technically not canon in the story. I felt like he would have gone back while the other patrol members left, and he just went and brought it back anyways, despite going against his then clanmate's permission. And besides that, he did actually resist temptations to eat on a patrol, so he's not horrible, but he has his moments. So that is all I have for Dappled Crash. And now we are on the last cat in the clan and obviously as you'll see in the character art she is not doing well and yes Twix is the kitten murderer herself again very confused with these murder choices but from what I could tell was going on it was like brush so with Twix I looked back on her relationship and she absolutely hated quiver kit and from what her relationship tabs was telling me this was because she is in love with golden star and in some twisted way she thought that maybe if golden star just wasn't really thinking about her original family maybe just maybe she'll have a chance with golden star but obviously that's not the case and now Twix is dealing with the fact that she murdered the leader's kitten. And out of game, originally I was going to just simply exile her, but I decided it would be a little bit more interesting if she stays in. And I even decided to draw her specific claw out because I decided that's the paw she used to kill Quiver Kit and now she's kind of just not there. I still might exile her later on, we will see, but I kind of want to keep her around just to see what other havoc she might cause in the Elder Den. So yes, she was the one that lured out Quiver Kit and did everything I explained in his section. Along with the fact someone in the clan does know she murdered Quiver Kit. Originally I was going to say who, but I think I'm going to wait we'll see but that's all I have for Twix she's she's a murderous little thing that's all I have <laughs> and of course with this whole lake brush thing she was able to use her insecurities against her and her feelings as more of a motive so that's the last cat Twix now you've made it to the end of year three of worm clan and I just wanted to apologize again. I don't think I've ever made an episode this long, but like I said, I just had a lot more to talk about, especially since I was able to connect more of a story this year than I was able to in year one and two. I hope I don't ever go this far again because I know it's gonna be it's gonna be a butt to export this, but I'll deal with it. So that is all I have for year three, and I hope to see you again for year four. Bye.